What's going on, everybody? Brian here again. And I just wanted to uh, bring you down here to historic Oregon City. And what I'm doing tonight is I am sturgeon fishing. So I have my rod out. And I thought I would share with you a little bit of the history of this place. It's uh, pretty cool. A lot of history. End of the Oregon Trail, number one. And this is where all the pioneers ended their journey when they left Missouri and they came out west. One of the other cool parts of this is, is that um, this was also one of the very first kind of commercial hubs. And behind me here, you can see uh, this big footing right over here. And what that footing is, is that is the lock. Uh, and that was the longest four chamber continuously serving lock in the United States up until it was decommissioned. And it's up for repair right now, but uh, nothing's been done with it yet. Over around the corner, back over that way, is the Willamette Falls. And if you guys saw my most recent post on Instagram, or maybe this is a couple of days ago, um, I posted about the history of the falls and its significance. And it's the second highest discharging fall in the United States behind Niagara Falls and 17th in the world. There's a lot of water that moves through here. But this has been a really significant place uh, culturally and historically for a lot of people, uh, not only for European settlers in the fur trade, but more importantly, the indigenous people that were here first. And this was a central trading area for those indigenous people. A lot of history here. So we're going to take a look at some other footage of the falls. I'm going to give you guys a little narration on some of the history and what's happening now here at the falls. So make sure to stay tuned. So what you're looking at here is the approach into the horseshoe of the falls there off to the right is a part of the Westland Paper Company and the new PGE hydroelectric project along with the physical fish ladder. Now you're looking up into the horseshoe of the falls and if you look off to the left there that's more of a mill storage pond up there but that's also where the very first four generator hydroelectric power plant with long transmission lines in the United States was constructed back in the late 1800s. That served Portland. Pretty cool stuff. Now the history of the falls goes back at least 5,000 years, if not further, to the time of the Missoula floods, which were cataclysmic floods that came out of Montana down the Columbia River Gorge and up into the Willamette Valley, inundating most of the lowlands. The falls were used traditionally by the indigenous people of northwestern Oregon as a place to fish, and they would fish for salmon and lamprey eel. Lamprey and salmon are a first people's food source. Now here's an image that might give you some nightmares. This is a pile of Pacific lamprey eel at Willamette Falls in 1913. Now to see this volume of eels in today's day is very rare, but just knowing that they're anatomists, they run out to the ocean, they come back into fresh water to complete their spawning cycle is something that's really important because they're very similar to salmon and steelhead in that respect where they'll go out, they'll get big in the ocean, and they come back into the river. And when they come back into the river because they use their mouths to climb the rocks, they're hand harvested by First Nations people who are the only people that are allowed to actually harvest and take these eels from the river. Most recently, this brand new fishing platform was installed by the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde for any of the treaty tribe use, and it's used for harvesting salmon, steelhead, and sturgeon via the use of a dip net, and it is working very well for those tribes. So where we're standing now is actually up on Highway 99E, which is also known as McLaughlin Boulevard. And what we're looking at down there is the actual entrance to the lock that goes up over the falls. You can see that this lock is very long. And over there is Westland Paper Company. And looking around here, panning over, you can see that the falls are right up there ahead. We're going to go up a little bit higher to a higher viewpoint so that you get a little bit better look at the falls. But this area here is the spillway for the physical falls itself. And it comes all the way down looking towards Westland. And from the earlier shots in the video, you can see that that is the public fishing dock. And the public fishing dock is open for public use. You come down the bluff over there, and you can fish down there for salmon and sturgeon and steelhead and whatever else you want. And, of course, you can hear all the wonderful road noise, but we are standing on top of what was affectionately known as the Oregon City Wall. The Oregon City Wall sat 40 feet above the Willamette River. 
And this was the original place where bank anglers would come to fish for sturgeon. And it closed down in 2010, and a lot of that was to protect the sturgeon. As you can see, there is a big drop-off here, and anglers would actually catch the fish off the edge of this wall here. And a lot of the old-timers will remember this. And if they were undersized, they would simply just throw them back into the river without the gentle release that they needed. And because sea lions now dwell up in this area, it really created a uh, feast for those sea lions. So in 2010, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife decided to close this. And in 2011, the dock was built and opened for public use so that people could continue to fish this awesome fishery for so sturgeon. So now we've moved up the river about a half mile and we're above that lower spillway of the actual falls here. And up behind Westland Paper Company there is where the lock passes through. And what I'm panning over to you right now is actually the fish ladder that the fish used for their fish passage and the new PGE substation with their hydroelectric generation. Now, down here below us is where that very first four generator substation was built in 1889. And then we keep going on here and you can see that there's been a lot of modifications to the physical falls itself and a lot of that was done by PGE in order to re-divert the water flow for the hydroelectric generation. But you can see that the horseshoe still remains intact. Down below, out of sight, is where that new fishing platform is and you can see where it would be advantageous to be able to go and access for fishing for those indigenous tribes. So the place I'm standing now is the John McLaughlin House, and we're actually up the hill from where we were at just a few minutes ago in the video. And John McLaughlin was a big part of early Oregon history and history in the Pacific Northwest. He was the chief benefactor for the Hudson Bay Company at Fort Vancouver, which is actually across the Columbia River north of where we're at right now. And in 1829, John McLaughlin came here to the falls and saw that it actually had a lot of potential for industrial use. So he filed a land claim and the falls was actually used for hydropower sources before hydroelectric power. In that time period, a woolen mill, a sawmill, and a paper mill were all put at the falls in addition to the continued commercial fishing and utilization of the falls itself. The falls really became the central hub of the development here at the end of the Oregon Trail. And that's one of the biggest things that the falls was the attractor to was the fact that there was actual industrial development happening west of the Mississippi in a place that would benefit from agricultural use such as Willamette Valley and also the industrial use in the shipping ports in the Willamette and the Columbia River. So a lot of history here just because of that one significant water feature. So here we are back in the garage after a couple days later of filming all that awesome footage. Now, there's a lot of history about the falls themselves. Things from the geology with the formation of the falls during the time period of the Missoula flood, which we talked about a little bit earlier in the video, and also the cultural significance of the falls from the standpoint of the indigenous people as well as the Americans that came here later on, the white European settlers and the fur trade and all of those people that settled into the mid and southern Willamette Valley as well. Now, the falls is fully open to the public from the points that I showed, but access into the horseshoe of the falls is restricted. The 
lower area of the spillway is totally open for fishing. Just make sure to check the regulations depending on the species that you're trying to target. And when you do go up there, make sure that you're careful uh, outside of just the falls and its historic presence. There are a lot of hazards in the water up there that if you're a first time boater or you've never been up there before, you should be very mindful. There's a lot of submerged rocks and snags, debris, things like that. And obviously not a good idea to go up there during elevated flows and discharge. There's a lot of debris that comes over the falls from upriver up above that. There's a lot of uh, trees and everything else. But the power of that falls, the historic context and significance of the falls and the cultural significance for so many generations of people in the Pacific Northwest really speaks volumes to what that falls means to everybody around us. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel. I'm enjoying putting these videos together for everybody that's willing to watch and throw in their input. It's, it means a lot to me to be able to share all of this with you. I've grown up around all of this, so it's nothing that's unusual for me to see. But for a lot of other people, it, it's something that they've never seen before, they've never experienced, and it's not something that's out there in common. The Willamette Falls is the second highest discharging falls in the United States. Like we were saying before, everybody knows about Niagara, but very few people know about Willamette Falls, except for the people here in the Pacific Northwest. So if you're from another area, make sure to drop where you're from also. We always like to hear about that. So nonetheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Get out there and explore your area and get out with a rod and do a little bit of fishing. Take care.